1999 World Health Organization publication stated that homeopathy is one of the most widespread non-conventional approaches to treatment known to the world. Homeopathic treatments have been used at some stage by approximately 4.4% of Australians. In the UK there are even homeopathic hospitals that receive government funding. With such widespread use, it is worth investigating what it is and how effective it is. In homeopathy, there is a law of similars, the idea that like cures like. Homeopathy looks at the symptoms and finds something that can cause similar symptoms. For example, according to homeopathy.md, if you had itchy eyes, the remedy might be dilute onion. For diarrhea or food poisoning, a homeopathic treatment could be dilute arsenic trioxide, presumably because arsenic trioxide causes vomiting and diarrhea before it kills you. If you had acne, a homeopathic treatment that is sometimes recommended is dilute anthrax. By the way, I'm not just making this up. Have a look for yourself. There's a link in the video description section. As you can see, the cause is not even considered. It's only the similarity in symptoms that determine the homeopathic remedy. Of course, you would not want to add to the problem, so homeopathy dilutes the substance with water, alcohol or sugar. They create very, very dilute solutions of substances that cause similar symptoms. If you wanted to use the dilution that the creator of homeopathy recommended for most treatments, you would use 30C, which is basically one part of the substance to 100 to the power of 30 parts water. That's pretty dilute. To make 30C, you mix one unit of the substance with 100 units of water, shake it, then take one unit of the diluted result, mix it with 100 units of water, shake it, and repeat this until you've done it 30 times. To get an idea of the final dilution of a 30C solution, take one drop of the substance and mix it with 100 to the power of 30 drops of water. For simplicity, let's assume that the density of the water in the resulting sphere is constant at 1000 kg per cubic meter. Therefore, you would need 50 by 10 to the power of 51 cubic meters to fit all that water in. This is the formula for the volume of a sphere, so the water would fit in a sphere of radius 229 by 10 to the power of 15 meters. So how big is this spherical ball of water? To get an idea, if we had a sphere of water the same size as the Earth, it wouldn't be anywhere near enough. The radius of the Sun is not even close. The Earth's orbit around the Sun, still a long way to go. Neptune is the most outer planet in the solar system and even its orbit is not enough. The next closest star to our Sun is Proxima Centauri, 4.2 light years away, or 40 by 10 to the power of 15 meters. And now we're finally getting to a similar order of magnitude. The sphere of water would have a radius of 24 light years, so that is one drop of substance in a sphere of water 48 light years diameter. Now if you think that a 30C dilution sounds ridiculous, there are even some homeopathic remedies that use 200C, that is 1 in 100 to the power of 200 dilution. That does not make sense! Homeopaths say that water has a memory effect to account for the fact that the patient is not usually receiving a single molecule of the original substance. But if there were a memory effect for the substance that's diluted, then surely there would be a memory effect for all the impurities in the water and everything else that the water had ever come in contact with previously. The International Standards Organization has standards for water purity. The most pure water grade in ISO 3696 basically allows for 10 parts per billion of contaminants. With this level of purity, the water cannot be stored in a glass or plastic container as these containers will leach contaminants from the container wall. So let's look at 10 parts per billion of contaminants with the previous scenario of one drop of substance in a sphere of water 48 light years diameter. Again, for simplicity, I am using the same assumptions as before. So this amount of water with 10 parts per billion of contaminants gives us a sphere of radius 492 by 10 to the 12 meters. That's about 110 times the orbit of Neptune. The one drop of original substance which you're diluting is completely swamped by the contaminants in the water. If there was a memory effect, all the water would be doing is remembering the other impurities. 
there is a reliable way to tell if homeopathic treatment works a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial with a sufficiently large sample size and the results would need to be repeatable. By doing this, both the patient and the person giving the patient the drug do not know if the patient is receiving their homeopathic treatment or the placebo until the trial is concluded. This is essential as the placebo effect is significant enough that it must be removed from the experiment to draw any valid conclusions. In 2005, Shang and Associates published a meta-study into homeopathy in the peer-reviewed journal The Lancet. The paper concluded, when analyses were restricted to large trials of high quality, there was no convincing evidence that homeopathy was superior to placebo. So basically, the evidence shows that homeopathy is not effective. The problem is not that people use homeopathy. It's really just water. It's relatively safe. The problem is that some people will abandon conventional medicine under the advice of homeopathic practitioners. In 2006, a group called Sense About Science sought advice from 10 homeopathic clinics and pharmacies about travel to tropical locations where malaria is widespread. In each case, the homeopaths were recommending unproven remedies instead of directing them to a general practitioner who can give them scientifically verified preventative drugs. The malaria virus kills over a million people each year, and a placebo is definitely not going to help. It doesn't make sense to replace scientifically validated modern medicine with something that just doesn't work. Finally, for the sake of comic relief, I am pleased to present Dr. Werner with the physics of homeopathy. And have all of you heard of uh, Einstein? The whole universal mass can be consolidated down into the size of a bowling ball. That's all there is in the whole world and the universe. So how much mass are you? Much That's right, an infinitesimal amount. So if you took that formula, E equals mc squared, you can almost cross out mass. Well, that's just nonsense. But anyway, let's consider mass to be insignificant. The answer is energy equals zero. Let's see if she gets the same answer. So the formula ends up being energy equals the speed of light. This statement demonstrates no understanding of the difference between addition and multiplication, no understanding of a squared value, and no idea of how to use Einstein's mass-energy equivalence formula. Next, she's going to claim that God sent Stephen Hawking to validate homeopathy. So God, in his infinite wisdom, sent him a, a, another Einstein called Stephen Hawking. But this is the best bit, the amendment to Einstein's theory of relativity. If you added to that theory, Einstein's theory of relativity, we have E equals mc squared, that mass is crossed out almost, and strings, vibration. That does not make sense.